Hi. So in this section, we're going to actually do some arguments. And I know how much uh, some of you love to argue <laughs> and be right. So, um, and I think arguing arguments um, are really good and they should really be about debate and discussions. And arguments are really about um you know, supporting valid reasoning behind your perspective, right? So here we're going to talk about arguments, um, inductive, deductive. Um, we're going to discuss what premises you have. So we're looking for logical arguments because once again, we're always, even though the argument may be emotional, um, there needs to be some sort of logical reasoning too. So there has to be some sort of deductive reasoning um, to support your point of view, right? So that's what this will do. We're going to actually discuss Euler circles too, which are really fun. So essentially there are two types of arguments. There are the inductive and deductive. So let's talk about that for a second. The premise is a previous statement or proposition from which is inf another is inferred and follows a conclusion. So the inductive argument collects specific examples as its premises to propose a conclusion. And a deductive argument is a collection of general statements as its premise. So inductive is nice in the sense that we do want inductive with specific examples to support that conclusion. But also deductive gives a collection of general statements that can come to that conclusion. So let's just take a look at a couple of arguments. So this first one says, um, the premises is, I forgot my purse last week, I forgot my purse today. And then the conclusion is, I always forget my purse. So between last week and today, weren't there many days in the week that I didn't forget my purse? So I don't always forget my purse, but I do forget my purse a lot. So I did forget my purse last week, today, I always forget my purse. So these are inductive, right? Because it gives specific examples in which support this conclusion. Um, I always forget my purse. That means I would have had a sequence of events in which I forgot my purse and that's the premises. So this would be an inductive um, argument and because it and then make sure you write this down so you know why it's inductive. It gave specific examples. Okay. So an inductive argument conclusion is not proven to be true or false. It just gives support and evidence to support the conclusion. So that's really important. So inductive means that it's not true or false. It's more of like giving specific examples or support or evidence to support that conclusion. A deductive argument says, well, if all the premises are true, then the conclusion follows logically. So um, if all the premises are true, then you have to say, okay, well, the conclusion directly follows. So now um, let's Let's take a look at some deductive arguments. So once again, to reiterate, remember an inductive argument is given specific examples and support where deductive gives facts and then you can logically conclude something. But sometimes it's kind of silly. So let's take a look. Determine if the deductive argument is valid or invalid. So all cats are mammals, a tiger is a cat. Notice that these premises are true. Cats are mammals and a tiger is a cat. Those are true facts. Well, then by the um, transitional property, um, I'm sorry. By the transitive property, if all cats are mammals and a tiger is a cat, then a tiger is a mammal, right? Like that just logically follows then. Because a cat is a mammal and a tiger is a cat, cat is a mammal, it's kind of like a zigzag, then a tiger should be a mammal, right? So we give like some sort of um, 
intuition uh, here, right? We see like that, oh no, if a cat, we know that for a fact, if a cat is a mammal and a tiger is a cat, that means the tiger is a mammal, right? And so it makes sense. And so right away you would say there's a valid conclusion. But that's just not good enough. Uh, intuition is good in the sense that it gets you on the right track, but it's not good enough for mathematics. Mathematics, we like to see things proven. So we can use Euler circles, and we did talk about Euler circles back in the uh, chapter for sets. Remember with chapter for sets, we had Venn diagrams, and Venn diagrams were derived from John Venn, and he thought of John, uh, John Venn thought of Venn diagrams to represent sets. And that idea came from Euler, because Euler decided to represent arguments with circles. So Euler circles came first, and then John Venn developed the Venn diagram. So Euler circles are just a graphical representation of the premises and conclusion, which will help to visualize. So the idea is here below is to analyze arguments with Euler circles, um, we would draw circles, right? So first we would draw these circles based on the premises of the arguments. Um, we don't, it's not a Venn diagram, so we don't need a rectangle. We just draw the circles. You draw an X where the second premise lies. And then you look at the conclusion, compare where the X is, and if it's clear where the X lies, then the argument is valid. But if that X can be placed from the second premise in different areas of the Euler circles, then we know that there is no direct logical conclusion. So our goal is to be able to identify the second premise and clearly put it in one Euler circle, and that means that that conclusion logically follows. So let's try this. So the first thing in step one is to draw the Euler circles based on the premises of the argument. So the first thing I read here is that all cats are mammals. So we have a lot of mammals in the world, right? Cats aren't the only mammals, so, and not everything's a cat. So we do know that this Euler circle that will be the bigger circle here will be mammals. And inside this mammal set is a subset, right, of cats. Okay, now that's step one. Step two says, now draw an X where the second premise lies. The second premise says the tiger is a cat. So if a tiger is a cat, then it goes inside this subset. Now, step three says, if X is clear where the conclusion lies, then the argument is valid. So here, if the tiger is a cat, it is clear that this X is inside this cat subset, which is inside the mammals. So does, is tiger a mammal? Well, yeah, this X is inside this bigger one. Yeah, it's a mammal. We got the same conclusion. It's valid. However, if they just said, well, a tiger is a mammal. I'm so sorry. <laughs> they said here, uh, a tiger is a mammal. You know, then we wouldn't know if it was a cat or some other mammal, like a bear or something like that. So if the X would be here, here, or maybe not even a mammal, right, out there, then we would say it's in, invalid because we didn't know, we, there's no logical conclusion. But a logical conclusion that follows directly from the premises, you know, no, we know directly where we're going to draw this X, right there in the cat's subset, which is in the, inside the mammal set. Okay, and that's really the steps. So sometimes it's intuitional, follow your intuition, but definitely be able to draw the Euler circles to be able to draw those good conclusions. So let's try another example. Here it says, we'll determine whether the deductive argument is valid or invalid. So no cows are purple. Fido is not a cow. So if no cows are purple, that means I have in the world things that are purple and then things that are cows. 
And if no cows are purple, these sets never meet, right? There's no intersection. They don't touch, right? They're separate. So everything that's purple is over here and everything that are cows because no cows are purple. So the second one, second step is to draw the X, right? So Fido is not a cow. So if Fido is not a cow, so here is the set of cows. So if Fido is not in this set, it is somewhere out here, right? But also if it's outside, remember it's the complement, don't forget the complement. So if it's not cows, it could be anywhere in the world out here except the subset, I mean except the set of cows. So that could include something that is out here or maybe something that is purple, right? So it, this, because it's, Fido is not a cow, it means that it's in this world of not cows, which could include, I don't know, cookies, cats, flowers, things that are purple. But is it in purple? Is, is Fido purple? I don't know. I mean, it could be, but it's out. I mean, it could be blue because it's out here. It's just, it's just, Fido just can't be a cow, right? And we don't know if that means that it's purple or not. So once again, this, this has to like go sink in as lot. We're very logic. It's just like either it's logically valid or it's not. If I say something is not a cow, do you automatically say, okay, that means it has to be purple. No, you don't. You're like, okay, it's just not a cow. It's just some other animal, I guess, right? So again, that's your that's your intuition thinking. That's exactly how this should follow. So yeah, I mean, I guess it could, something else could, Fido be purple, or it just could be just something out there that's just not a cow. So now look at the conclusion. Fido is purple. Well, is Fido purple? No, not really. Just because something is not a cow doesn't make it purple, right? So no, it's not valid. This is an invalid conclusion. So here are um, the general diagrams for when you are doing homework and practice. I just put them in a little box, so maybe mark this or tap this with those little 3M tabs. Um, and just say, if all A are B, that means B will be the bigger set and A is the subset. So just like here, when we said all cats are mammals, remember this is B, all A are B. So B is the bigger set mammals and A is the smaller set. The other one is some A are B. And notice that looks like the ones with sets, the Euler, but they're not their Euler circles. And if some A are B, that means that they just mean that the set may have an intersection. So you'll draw them like that with a little overlap. And then the last example with, um, not cow, no cows are purple, so not A or B, that means they're separated and there is no touching. Okay, so those are three basic ones. Uh, the next uh, piece would be uh, to try to use it in more of a direct way. Some students find the, oh, intuition, drawing circles. Uh, can I just have like a direct way, right? So, of course. So, it, we talk, discussed truth tables for a while. So, let's go ahead and try to use a truth table here because the premises are just the statements, right? For example, if we kind of cut our premises up here into two statements, right? This is, we could see this is an implication. So, maybe we could discuss the antecedent and consequence. So, let's say if we had it, um, let P be the statement, I have a shovel, right? And Q be, um, I can dig a hole. Okay, so let's try to make a truth table with this. It's two statements, two choices. So again, we have four scenarios. Okay, so here is P, here's Q. Now let's do the true, true, false, false, the usuals and the alternating on Q. And now let's do the first premise. 
if p then q. Right, if, if I have a shovel, I can dig a hole, if P then Q. Remember, the only time that an implication is false is when you actually won tickets to Coachella but didn't take your friend, you were a bad friend, right? So everything else is okay. So if true, then true. If true, then false, that's when you were a bad friend. And then if false, then true. And then if false, then false, it's true. Okay, so now, um, we're going to now do, if I have a shovel, I can dig a hole, and then I dug a hole. So here we're going to have if P then Q and Q, right? Because I'm saying if I, do, um, if I have a shovel, I can dig a hole, and I dug a hole. Can you believe that? So we're going to do and, and is more strict, remember, and it's if you have to bring coffee, um, sugar and cream in, in the coffee in order not to be fired, remember? So um, again, if you are an assistant to a CEO and they say coffee and cream, I'm sorry, uh, sugar and cream in the coffee or you're fired, it has to be both or you're fired. I, one or, well, if one is missing, it's over, right? So here we can look at the column Q and um, the column if P then Q. Again, we don't care about the headers. We only care about the truth values in those columns. So the only time that that and is false is when you have a false truth value in one of the statements. Other than that, it has to be both or nothing. So true and true, right? Sugar and cream gives you true. False and false, you brought nothing, nothing, neither sugar or cream, you definitely got fired. And true and true is true, and false and true is false. Great. So the last part of this is now to include the conclusion. It says, well, if you have a shovel and you dug a hole, then you dug a hole and you dug a hole, then this has to mean you had a shovel. So it's going to be if P then Q and Q, then you had a shovel. And recall a shovel was um, statement P. So let's go ahead and write um, P here and over again. So true, true, false, false. And let me highlight that in blue, just like that. Okay, so once again, um, let's go over this. So the premises will have an and between them in a truth table. So if I have a shovel, I can dig a hole. And I dug a hole. Whoa, right? So if I have a shovel and I can dig a hole and I dug a hole, then this means that I have a shovel. So then this means I have a shovel. So now the most important part here is this piece here. If this column here is a tautology, and that means all the truth values in this column are true, then this argument is valid. If there's one false truth value, then it's invalid. The only way a deductive argument is valid when it comes to a truth table is if it's a tautology and all the truth values are true. So let's go ahead and find this out. Again, it's if and then, it's an implication. Recall the only time the implication is false is when you were a bad friend, that you won tickets to Coachella, but you didn't take your friend, right? Other than that, remember that if you won tickets, you took your friend, or if you didn't win tickets, but you went anyways because you ended up buying them, or you didn't win tickets and you didn't go, and that means you just went out for wine night or dinner, right? So the only time is if you have a true antecedent and a false consequence. So if true, then true, okay, that's you won tickets and then you um, took your friend. If you didn't win, right, if false, then true. If you didn't win, but you win anyways, that's great. That's a true. If true, then false, 
Here we go. So if you won tickets but didn't take your friend, you are a bad friend. And if false, then false. Well, if you didn't win tickets and you didn't go anyways, no harm done, right? True. So notice that it goes true, true, false, true. And this false makes this whole thing invalid. So this is an invalid dark, dark, um, argument. Now, let's make a note, right? The reason why it's not valid because the truth table is not a tautology. And the only way a deductive argument is valid using a truth table is if the table is a tautology. And so let's go ahead and make a note of that. So we'll say here, since the truth table is not a tautology, then the argument is invalid. So if you want to do um, arguments with truth tables, you can, and just make sure that when you have your premises here, that you have an and in between them, right? And then the conclusion will be then, right, the implication. And then make sure you identify the statements here so that way you can use them up on the header. And recall, like, the header doesn't matter much, but we need it to organize our truth values. Um, the next one is, if I wanted to do this as an Euler circle, recall that I would need some sort of diagram here and draw an X where the second premise lies and see if it's valid. So let's say if I wanted to use Euler circles, instead of a truth table. So if I have a shovel, I can dig a hole. So I can dig a hole with a lot of different pieces, right? So if A, then B, right? So well, it's something, it's similar to all A or B, if A, then B. So B would be the bigger circle here. It would be like things um, or I'm so it would be holes, right? A bunch of holes, small, large, whatever. And then the if A then B, so that's like a B. And the A would be the subset. So if I have a shovel, so here's A. So it's just um, this would be shovels because in here. There are a bunch of little subsets that, of things that you can dig holes with, right? Shovels, excavators, a bucket, right? Hands. So there's a lot of different subsets here, but the subset that we're given is a shovel that we can dig holes with. So if A, then B. So let me go ahead and highlight those. So if A then B means that B is the bigger one. So if I have a shovel, I can dig a hole. Hole will be a bigger oil or circle. A subset would be the shovel. Then you draw an X where the second premise lies. So I dug a hole. So if you dug a hole right away, you said, okay, well, you dug a hole, it's here. Okay, but that means you didn't use a shovel. But could you have dug a hole using a shovel? Yeah. Could you have dug a hole using something else? <laughs> yeah, right? So just because I dug a hole, I mean, did I use a shovel or did I use something else out here? I don't know. So because the Euler, um, using Euler circles and that X is not, has a definite location, that means that it's an invalid argument. So you would have gotten an invalid argument um, whether you used uh, a truth table or Euler circles.